Do you need to create a project request form? Are you not quite sure what information you need to capture, what fields to include, or how to best format it? Maybe you are looking for an optimized project request form template. Well, either way, you've come to the right place because in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a project request form template that you can leverage from this moment going forward. Now, before I walk you through exactly how to create this, I do just want to quickly mention that I have made this project request form available for instant download. There will be a link in the description below if you do want to pick it up. Now, there will be a slight cost to it, but I've tried to make it as affordable as possible. It will be available for less than the price of a cup of coffee. It will save you a significant amount of time you building this yourself and it also helps to support the channel. So win-win uh, for you and I there. Nevertheless, let me show you exactly how to build this if you do have a little bit of time or you want to learn how it, what kind of goes into creating this kind of document. So what I've done here is I've just created a brand new uh, Word document. Bear in mind, what I'm gonna be sh sharing with you right now is the process and what you want to include. So you could theoretically replicate this in another software or platform it could be a project management software or platform for instance nevertheless let's delve into it so the first thing that i recommend that you do is start the document with a heading so what this essentially does is if you share this with anybody they know exactly what they have opened so what i've done there is i've literally just typed project request form i've bolded it to show it's a header and i've just increased the font size to around 24. Next, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to create this template as quickly as possible. Now, the first thing to do is to go on the, ho on, on the uh, ribbon at the top, we wanna click insert, and then we want to click table. At this point, you want to select a two by four table. Now, we're gonna be building um, a, a series of different tables. We're gonna be replicating them as well to save us some time. But what this table is all about is it's essentially just giving us the chance to include kind of high level information right up front and center. So the fields I'd recommend including are the following. Now, this looks a little bit ugly. So what I'd suggest that you do is in the table design aspect of the ribbon. So if I click off of this and then click here and then click table design, you essentially want to choose something like grid table one I'm going to make the font size a lot smaller and I'm going to bold this here and then I'm gonna put some shading in. I just think this looks really, really professional uh, and it also helps to differentiate the uh, columns. Now what you can do is this, this typically makes sense in terms of content area, but if you want to um, basically imply that you want further information, you can press enter in any one of these boxes and it just makes the boxes bigger and as I say, that just gives the uh, suggestion that you want more information. So we'll be leveraging that going forward. At this point, you wanna select this, press Control C, go down, Control V. Now there's a couple more um, tables we want to create here. So estimated start date and estimated end date. So that's the project dates there. We don't need these two. So select these two and we can click delete delete cells, okay. Now the reason why we're doing a copy and paste is because, let's put this down to 14 just to, so I just, in this area here, I just reduced the font size down to 12 just to create some, reduce the spacing there. Now the reason why I'm copying and pasting these is it just saves uh, time uh, from the need to have to uh, essentially format every table that you create. So it's better than kind of doing it one by one if you like. The other content area I'd recommend putting in at, at the top is the project sponsor and the project owner. Just their kind of key information that you're going to want to capture as part of the project request process. So that's the kind of core content area. Now we just need to build all of the other elements of the form. So the first one I'd recommend that you do is project summary. So I'm going to write that out, make sure that's bolded and the main heading of the document is 24, so this would make sense to be kind of like 18 because we want a kind of nice structure. You could also kind of leverage this heading functionality. So I could put this in heading one, I could put this in heading two, etc., etc., just to create that hierarchy. But I'm not going to do that for now. 
What I'm going to do is press insert and I'm going to press table and I want a one by one. Again, if I press kind of space, uh, I'm going to put a couple of spaces just to indicate uh, to the individual that um, we want some further information there. Now I'm going to press Control C, Control V, I'm going to space there, and I'm going to put that down to a 12. At this point, I want this to be desired project outcome. So these boxes are essentially where somebody who is submitting a project request would enter that information. Now you can also put kind of placeholder text to give the individual uh, an idea of what kind of information to include. You could even put a practical example of what uh, a good, say, project summary is. You can do that as well. So what I'm going to do here is press Control C. So I left clicked on my mouse, dragged down to the box. Control C, go here. I'm going to put that down again to 12. Control V, space. Here we want an area to collect the benefits of the project because we want to know whether this is a project we should be pr proceeding with. Control C, Control V, Enter. Then we need an area for assumptions. So what do we? What will the individual assume to be in place uh, for this project to proceed? Or what? What is being assumed? Uh, for yeah, what is being assumed essentially? Measurement of success. So what will the project, how will we measure its success? You know, will it be new user signups? Will it be uh, better uptime? You get the idea. Now we are going to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to delete this off. This time we want scope of work. And we're going to go back to our trusted table at the top here. Uh, I'm going to use this one. So I selected top left, control C. Now what we want to do here is go down there, control V. Now this we're going to have as in scope, this we're going to have as out of scope, and then we're going to have an air, a content area for uncertain. Now we don't need this, so left click, drag across, backspace, shift cells, sh shift cells left, okay. Now enter, 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 because I want some, some larger content areas there. Now the next thing we're going to have an area for is, and I'm going to select this table as well, Control, so select all of this, Control C, Control V. We want an area for timelines and milestones. So what we're going to do in at this point is we are going to change this to milestone. I'm going to change this to deadline. Now we're going to remove that, remove this. We're going to change these into white background. We're going to change this into a matching grey background. I'm also going to remove that space like that. And I'm going to I'm going to um, make these a little bit bigger. So put that for size 14. As you know, let's put that as 13. That looks a bit better. 13. Now the next section we want to include, so we're going to drag that down, Control C, go on to the next page. No, we'll be okay, hopefully. We might need to go on to the next page. Yeah, I'm going to put it on the next page. Is for our project cost. Now I'm going to left click in here, right click, insert rows below. In here, I want the project budget. And then in this content area here, you can put that. In this here, we want to put the total estimated cost because they can be different, what the budget is to what you expect it to cost. And then what you can do in these fields is you can just do a bit of a breakdown. So for instance, it could be materials in here. It could be labor, right click, insert, rows below, it could be hardware, you get the idea. Whatever costs are involved with that project, this is more of a breakdown. And then in these sections here, you can include uh, those figures. Unbold that just for the formatting aspect. And then at the bottom, very simple, we are going to have, I've left clicked here, 
gone down to the first row, control C, enter, control V. Now this is where we get acceptance of the proposal. So it's where we essentially get sign off. So in here, I'm gonna type in signature and in here, date of acceptance. And we've obviously got these content areas for anyone to provide that information. I clicked in here and pressed delete just to remove that space. So that is how to create a project request form from scratch. It's optimized, it's pre-formatted, it's ready to kind of enter information into. Of course, you may want to add, add some dummy information or even some placeholder content just to give the individual uh, an idea as to uh, what to include in each, uh, each box. And the other thing you can do is at the bottom or perhaps at the top, you could just give some guidance as to how to fill out this form. You could also uh, make a suggestion such as once completed, please send to, and then include the email address of the individual that the uh, form should be sent to, essentially. So that's how to create a project request form. I hope this video is useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. Remember, there's a link in the description if you want to pick up this template and don't want to build it yourself. Chances are, if you're still here on this video, you've actually built it. Nevertheless, over to you. Hope you have an excellent day and best of luck.